Well, first, let me uh, welcome everybody to this 30 minute TEC video focused on the new AS13100 standard, which is the brainchild of the AESQ strategy group. My name is David Scrimshaw and I'm the Managing Director of TEC. TEC have been in continuous business since 1977 and we specialise in providing consulting and empowerment training in the aerospace and defence industries. Ourselves, we are certified to ISO 9001 uh, 2015. Uh, strangely, we've been certified uh, for the last 25 years. We're also an IRCAC QI training partner. We deliver the AS9100 lead auditor courses. We're also an AESQ recognized training provider, which means ourselves and all our courses have been evaluated and certified by Probitas authentication. And we're also an IAQG training provider. It could be that your own auditors from your certification bodies were actually trained by us. And what I need to do first of all is explain exactly who the AS, AESQ are. It stands for the Aerospace Engine Supplier Quality Strategy Group. It was formed back in 2013 by Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, GE Aviation and San Fran Aircraft Engines. Since that time, the membership in terms of the customers has grown considerably. Currently, it stands at 12, um, Megit being the latest company to uh, join the group. In order to understand what's happening in the industry, we really need to look at the AESQ's vision. And the vision is now shown on the slides. Summarizing it, they're looking at standardizing requirements for their supply chain. They're looking at creating a lean supply chain, operating world-class quality levels with a culture of continual improvement. This vision is supported by their guiding principles. First of all, to simplify and standardize the requirements that are going to impose on their supply chain. They're not going to start from scratch. They're going to build on existing industry standards like AS9100 and AS9145. Doing this, they're going to create a common language for quality that all the suppliers will easily understand. The standards they produce are going to be deliberately simple, but prescriptive, which means they're going to be easy to audit, including self-auditing. They're going to promote standardized third-party training, which is where companies like TEC come in, and they're going to create standards which are easy for their supply chain to incorporate into their existing quality management systems. They're not going to have to start from scratch. And overall, everything, they want to deliver um, the results as quickly as possible through focused activities like companies undertaking gap analysis, like addressing any um, shortcomings in their existing quality systems. They'd like to see this done as fast as possible. So where are we now? Well, if we look at the situation we face today, the customers of aero engines were basically the airlines and operators, and of course ourselves as passenger, expect zero defects with every product, every product being delivered on time. Having said that, flying still remains the safest form of all transportation. However, particularly focusing on engines, there have been a number of product recalls over recent years, resulting in major negative cost impact on the airlines. And what we have to remember is that the responsibility for that probably rests with the supply chain. Over 70% of engine contact, uh, content comes from the supply chain. And the problem is the majority of quality issues emanate from the supply chain. So the question that the EAQG asked, are to ask themselves is, is the problem with the supply chain or is it our fault? And so they took a survey. And this one is just a summary of the survey. First of all, I'm going to show you what the customer's view was of their suppliers. First and foremost, they consider their suppliers to be reactive. They focus far too much on 100% inspection, sorting bad parts from good parts. The next one was that they sound a very, very poor compliance with customer requirements and standards. This came to light when the customers themselves conducted audit. They saw very, very limited application 
of advanced product quality planning and process control. It just wasn't happening. Also, there was not a great deal of evidence that they were doing root cause corrective action. And of course, with all these things, there was little evidence of continual improvement. The situation a year ago will be very similar to the situation we have today. That's the customer's views of the suppliers. Let's look at the other side of the coin. The first thing we have to remember is that suppliers, a supplier, probably works for several customers. And the comments that come back from them, given that this situation is that each customer has different requirements. They tend to be complex and they tend to be written page after page after page. They're also subject to an awful lot of customer audits, resulting in inconsistent results. Depending on who the auditor was, their interpretation tended to be different. There was no common requirements for quality, quality management systems or the use of tools. Each customer tended to have their own preferences, which caused problems. And also, they were subject to high levels of customer control and intervention, taking up valuable time on these supplier companies. So, what has to happen? Well, as a result of the survey, um, <clears throat> the AESQ came up with two factors. Uh, they fa one factor was collaboration was going to be absolutely necessary, which in my opinion also included communication between customers and suppliers, and also standardization of the requirements. Customer suppliers who are the main stakeholder in this must talk quality using the same language. That's the only way they're going to deliver quality products to the end users. So what needed to happen? Involve all stakeholders, create a single standard which would be acceptable to all of the customers, deploy the standard throughout the supply chain and get the suppliers to actually use the standard. In developing the standard, not just to include the customer specific requirements, but to think about regulatory requirements and also the requirements of the industry. For instance, ISO, AS9100, NADCAP and so forth. The output would be a standard that everybody would use, they would all use the same ways of working and there would be a common language for quality. <clears throat> so the solution, the solution was published as AS 13100 uh, 2021 in March. Uh, the title, fairly lengthy but very explicit, AESQ QMS requirements for aero engine design and production organisations. Uh, by the way, check the pronunciation, which I still make mistakes with. But there is now a common understanding that the success of the entire industry uh, is dependent on the deployment of world-class industry standards. And the basis of those is going to be AS 13100, supported by the IAQG standards, AS 9100, AS 9145. The goal, well, very straightforward, to make sure that all the expectations were very, very clearly defined in the standard, all of them with the word shall in front of them and supported by examples. All the differing requirements of customers disappear. They're all going to use the same standard and there's going to be a consistent use of customer requirements and regulatory specifications. So how does it work? The whole of AS 9100 and 9145, all their requirements, all their clauses, clauses have been included in their entirety. AS 13100 simply adds supplemental requirements to each clause where necessary. Yeah? And as with AS, ISO 9001 and AS 9100, not all requirements, clauses, are going to be applicable to every organisation. For instance, the most obvious example is if your company is a make to print, then clearly you don't do any product design and development. You get the prints and specifications from your customer. Clause 8.3 wouldn't be required. But AS 13100 goes further. It provides far more guidance as to what is required and what is not required. It itself is split into three chapters. Chapter A deals with the quality management system these are the AS9100 clauses with the supplemental requirements. Two tables. The first table helps you specify which of the additional supplemental requirements, which clauses apply to you. So table one 
in the standard lists the different types of organization and next to them the clauses of the standard which are applicable so there can be no misunderstanding there's also a table two which in fact which mandates what sort of third party certifications are going to be necessary in some cases it might be just iso 9001 for other types of organization it would be as 9100 including design uh, and for other companies, supply, oh, supply materials, etc., it might be AS9120 that's required, but they are specified. Chapter B deals with the requirements for advanced product quality planning and the production part approval process. So the whole of AS9145 is included in its entirety and the supplemental requirements uh, for the aero engine manufacturers are added to it. And the third one, the third chapter, Chapter C, simply lists the key requirements for the deployment of the quality planning tools, and it lists them in detail. <clears throat> so to summarize, um, AS13100 uh, incorporates all of the requirements of AS9100 in Chapter A and AS9145 in Chapter B, uh, to which it adds its supplementary requirements. And uh, so it, if you're already AS9100 uh, registered, um, if you have um, conformity with AS9145, the move will not be too difficult for you. But what I haven't mentioned is the quality tools. So we need to look at those. There are several quality tools mentioned throughout the additional requirements. Yeah, several of them. But of particular importance are the ones which are listed in Chapter C. They are... Design failure modes and effects analysis, if you're a design organization. Process failure modes and effects analysis, if you are a make to print organization or a manufacturing organization. For everybody, measurement systems analysis, for looking at the quality of your gauging systems and process control methods, for looking at things like CPK values for key characteristics and following that forward with things like statistical process control. The AESQ have not just left it with the standard. In order to explain how approaches can be used, particular approaches can be used to satisfy particular clauses, they've introduced their reference manuals. Uh, they're, all, um, they're all designated as RM13000 and X. Now they're available free of charge from the AESQ's website. I've put the website address on the bottom of the slides. And these reference manuals are either PDF documents, which you can download, or they are Microsoft Excel documents spreadsheets. Yeah. Just to remind everybody that the pre-existing 13,000 series are now superseded by 13,100 particular requirements, but they're still very, very useful sources of information, particularly process control methods and the measurement systems analysis. Uh, still very useful. If you've got them, don't throw them away. You can still use them. So where do we fit in? Well, TC Transnational, um, our job is to provide training in the tools. So the four tools which are mandatory, we have both e-learning courses, face-to-face -face courses and on-site workshops if you need our help. As far as the requirements of 13,100, the AESQ have partnered with the SAE and are providing videos and courses focused on the requirements. So where do we go from here? My view is the first step that anybody who is supplying the um, aero engine manufacturers would be to undertake a gap analysis. And the best thing here is to use their RM documents. RM 13009 explains how to conduct an audit an annual compliance self-assessment audit of your quality management systems. You can record all the information on a second document, which in fact is an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, the spreadsheet itself is split into chapters A, B, and C with a series of audit questions. You can use that as an initial gap analysis. Once you've got that, address all the gaps as possible, but also pay particular attention to the training requirements. Yeah, they will be expecting competency in all the people concerned. Well, that's our first look. 
at uh, AS 13100. And um, I hope you found it useful. Uh, please make a note of the web addresses on this slide, um, particularly the AS, the AESQ, um, and uh, be, be and get ready, download their various documents. Um, and from my point of view, it's all been a bit rushed. Sorry about that, but thank you so much for, for viewing and let us know your reaction and see you at the next TEC video.